right, who wants to recap us? All right, so Gloaming has come to this town because uh, people are going missing. Well, on his adventure, getting ready to go into investigation mode, he ends up meeting two unlikely allies uh, whose name I am already forgetting. Montgomery and Curtick. Montgomery and Curtick. Uh, they manage to go to the governor's office. They essentially uh, get down to business that, uh, yeah, people are going missing and has something to do with this tavern. Local tavern owner has gone missing. And the last person who saw the blacksmith, he was on his way to the tavern. So pretty obvious. We're going to go check out the tavern. I thought grandma was a good lead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have gone digging up some bodies. You want to go check out the uh, tavern's owner's grandparents. Meanwhile, we do get to the inn and the first thing Kurdick does, literally assault the bartender. Where's Gary? <laughs> who had taken over for the uh, guy who owned it. Um, we do manage to like calm him down before we get kicked out. And he offers us three drinks. My character doesn't drink because he's on an investigation. Montgomery gets smashed. <laughs> Montgomery downs the first one and manages to pass the save. So he gets another drink and manages to pass the save on that. Meanwhile, the other people in the bar are kind of like closing in on us. And the bartender is like eyeing them. Is like, hey, any second now. So we do get up into a fight. All the people in the bar suddenly have a third eye open up on their forehead. And they're like screaming about like, oh, the unseen eye, yada, yada, yada. Or they turn to like jelly people, lizard people. We kill them all. Oh, yeah. They all, they all died. Tried getting some information from a bartender, but we realized that was fruitless. So we killed him as well. Found an entrance down into like the basement. Followed that where we ended up finding the blacksmith, who is a coward, locked up. Complaining about like, oh, the terrible things they've done to me. Uh, meanwhile, there was a child in another cage who was, like, kind of silently crying to herself. Catatonic. <laughs> uh, Montgomery burrowed into both of those cages to let them out. Uh, Blacksmith just tried to bolt, but Clover was like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You're a man. Take this young child with you and make sure she gets to safety. And Montgomery is talking to the child. Turns out her mother's been taking. Uh, apparently, the owner of the tavern has been abducting people. And according to the blacksmith, he found something. And that's what kind of led to this. Whereas, like, uh, Gloaming seems to think it was just because everyone was racist towards the... Uh, the tiefling? The tiefling. Because he's Blackie. <laughs> oh, yeah, Blackie. And his name wasn't Blackie. His nickname was Blackthorn. That we assume the behind his back, everyone was calling him Blackie. Anyway, we release the prisoners. And we continue down through another door where we come to a puzzle, a riddle... Uh, we are not good at either of those. Yeah, we're kind of retarded. Uh, we end up failing the riddle, but it ends up turning into a, like, stone golem. That's just laser beams out of its fucking eye. We defeated it after taking some damage. Uh, so we solved the riddle. We solved the puzzle. Hey, you guys are kind of hurting after that. It wasn't for uh, Montgomery's healing. It, it would have been pretty bad. <laughs> we solved the puzzle. We solved the riddle. For violence. <laughs> and now we have an entrance going further down that we have yet to go down. I kind of figure that's when Titus shows up. I assume that I would just kind of maybe stumble through a dimension door out of the Feywild to go, whoa, this is not the right door. You'd be surprised how often that happens. Excuse me, pardon me, just passing through. Hi there, friend. I'm Montgomery. Hello. <laughs> Do I still have my uh, Shadow Blade in hand? Has, has that timed out yet? I would say no. The fight just ended. I'm going to swing my, not swing my sword at him, but point my Shadow Sword towards him. Whoa, whoa, we don't know who this guy is. He just randomly showed up in this dungeon that we're fighting in. You don't find that a little strange? A little odd? I find everything strange. Uh, Kurdick follows Gloaming's lead, and he'll immediately pull out his laser rifle. He looks like a decent sort. <laughs> and just so you know, I, my guy Titus Vasilios, he is covered in nice uh, chain mail, covered in vines and lichen and moss and everything. Uh, and he is a satyr. So he's a little goatee boy. <laughs> He's going to fit boy. in so great with Blackthorn. I don't appreciate Satis <laughs> just coming in here through random doors. That was a dimension door. Trust me, this is not what I was looking for, but I think that might be the God's will that I'm here. I don't know, but I guess we... Jussie, who are you? I'm asking the questions here. I'm an investigator. I work for the Circle of Nine. Very official paperwork. I, like, grab some, like, paperwork from within my robe, and I just kind of point it in front of you. It looks very official. Titus, you, uh, you notice this is a dry cleaning bill. I glance over <laughs> and I say, interesting, interesting. Well, I, uh, I work for the square root of 10. I don't believe I'm familiar with that. Ranks higher than nine. Kurdick starts <laughs> counting on his fingers. 
And when he says, when um, Titus says that, he starts like counting. His uh, laser rifle is pointed at Titus, and he slowly moves it towards gloaming. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what are you doing? And he points it back at Titus, but a little bit closer. I say, trust me, my friends, I clearly not my vibe. I just want to get home. If you don't mind, if you would show me the way out, that would be appreciated. Unfortunately, friend, the way back is a wall. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to point over to where the door was. That was the way out. Like the door that I came through? No, the do there's no door there. I'm just pointing to a wall. So at the very back, there used to be a door. And then at the front, which is the doorway we're at right now and where you came out near. So yeah, the door is just gone. So the only way forward is, well, forward. <laughs> Welcome to the group. We're here to help people. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm with him. I'm going to go lean over to Kodak, like, keep an eye on him. I don't trust him. I guess our interests are aligned. Um, shall we proceed? I'm going, like, straight first. I, I just pat him on the shoulder. It's like, this is my friend. <laughs> and, and we just start going. I cast light on my boomerang because I have one of those for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just holding it. You know, this is a mysterious world we live in. You know, random things popping into people's pockets and, you know, people appearing in random dungeons. Some barbarians gave it to me. They called it a magic stick. I didn't have the art to say it wasn't, so this is my magic stick. Interesting. I, I'll <laughs> cast light on my shield. Gloaming has dark vision, so he's pretty good. But he's going to stay in the back, and he's just going to keep an eye on Titus. Erdix squints intensely and then realizes he can see fine. He's like, right, <laughs> dark vision. All right, so you guys start heading down the stairway, down a long, a relatively long hall, and you get to this small room opening, and there appears to be a woman in a cloak standing in front of a large doorway. Uh, the moment she sees you, she's like, Welcome, greetings, newcomers. Are you here to be shown the way? Is this the way? Do you know the way? <laughs> this is the way. It is indeed. <laughs> it has been foretold to us that you would be arriving here. Come. Welcome, the ritual is beginning. And she, like, points towards the door. Um, what was the, uh, little girl's name? I believe it was, uh, it was Gwen. Uh, woman, are you, do you know of the child Gwen? I know nothing of names, only that there are new members daily. That, is she talking about me? Yes, welcome. Uh, no. No, 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 the cult, there's a whole cult thing going, don't, don't, don't get into this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. If you if you really friendly towards us, then don't don't join a cult. E easy enough. Please enter. We have been waiting for you. Who is we? She just pointing to the doors. How many doors? Two. She says that I uh, I gym the camera. You what the camera? <laughs> yeah what? I gym the camera like in the office. The face he makes and looks directly at the camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's like proceed, and I just go. Hmm? <laughs> so we have two doors to go through? I assume it was a double door. Yeah, it's a big double door. Oh, well, technically, yes, two doors. Ah. It, technically, yes, if you if the guy's got to really ruin the fantasy of it. <laughs> I opened the left door. Oh, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong door. Uh, that one actually opens up inwards towards us. It's like you're just stuck trying to move it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're standing there. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, only one opens. I'll go over and I'll pull the door open and like hold it open for him. Like, see? This way. <laughs> As you enter, it's a small hallway into what is a very large room. In each corner, there's large blazers. Like jackets? Shut up. <laughs> oh, brazers, you know, like, you know, fire. Fire damn it. Oh, bra brazers. <laughs> brazers, yeah. Fire damn it. <laughs> I thought you said blazers. He did say blazers. <laughs> yes. The ceilings are probably about 50 feet tall. There are four large columns holding it up. And braziers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and in the back, you see that there is a stairway leading up maybe about 10 feet up to what appears to be a staging with a couple of torches lit. You see, like, by two of the closer pillars on either side, left and right of you are two cloak figures. Above on the uh, landing up the stairs, you see two other cloaked figures. In the center of this landing 10 feet up, you'll see what seems to be a pedestal with a large crystal ball on it. Behind that, you see a woman, and behind her, you see a red-skinned, black-horned tiefling. Gary? You found Gary. So, six people. Yep. Now, Gary, that's enough. I'm sure these people have said terrible things about you behind your back. <laughs> that doesn't justify these things you're doing. 
Uh, Gary <laughs> steps forward. Welcome, initiates. The Unseen Eye told us of your arrival and gleefully accepts you joining us here today. That's interesting. You will be transformed as things unseen to you, unknown to you, become known, and you will become its champions. Nope, I know enough. I could, I could know a little more. <laughs> <laughs> the enthusiasm is what we are looking for here. And please, come, step up. Kurdic looks down at Gloaming. She's just shaking her head no. Uh, Kurdic leans the top half of his long-limbed body, leans forward as if to take a step, continues <laughs> to look at Gloaming. Don't do it. Don't, don't you dare. <laughs> don't, don't you do it. Kurdic lifts up his big toe. All right, Blackthorn, is this the path you've chosen? Once the truth is revealed, is the only one. Yeah, Ray of Frost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, you guys will notice behind him, um, the woman is, like, transfixed on this crystal ball. You can see, like, in her forehead what well, seems to be a seam forming and blood dripping from it. Oh, they make ointments for that. And spells. All right, and she is just transfixed on this crystal ball. All right, so everyone roll initiative. Uh, do I get my attack off? Yeah, sure. What's he got to do? Uh, he's got to take it in the face because I hit 22. <laughs> he's taking eight cold damage. Oh, oh, shit. And his movement speed reduced by 10. You think he's going to need to move. All right, so let's roll initiative real quick. I got a 17. I got the 11. We haven't taken a short rest, huh? Nope. I'm fucked. It's okay, I'm here. <laughs> Seven. Court, you just got to just keep blasting. Yeah, but I have no key points. He's going to blast them. Yeah, I'm just going to shoot him with my laser rifle. That's, like, all I can do. Doesn't your laser uh, like rifle do, like, some insane damage? Like, 3d8 or some shit like that, right? Yeah, 3d8 plus 3. Whoa, is me. Whoa, is me. Yeah, talk about having, like, laser gun <laughs> problems. We're over here with, like, swords and shields. He's shooting a laser gun. Make my Eldritch Blast look like garbage. <laughs> like, oh, my water's too clean. Oh, I have, I have a massive energy weapon. <laughs> I rolled a 5 for my initiative. As you send that blast towards him, um, one of the cloaked figures nearest him is going to move ahead of that and take the hit. Ah, I didn't realize you were a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Just devoted followers. Um, so what's the damage? Uh, eight. Cold damage. And their movement speed is reduced by ten. All right, so top of the round is going to be Montgomery. I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast at the, the crystal ball. What is your arcane? Are you trained in arcane? Yeah, I got arcana. Proficiencies, arcana, investigation. Yeah. You would know certainly whatever this is is going to be magical. Obviously, it's clearly, you know, the cause of all this. All right, so, you know, even, like, the most mundane magical things aren't easily destroyed. I was mostly just thinking of, like, bouncing it and hitting someone with it to interrupt the corruption process of the lady getting her head trepanated. You know what? Fuck it. I'm with Sacred Flame, the guy that uh, took the ice. He needs to make a deck save. He does not make it. Oh, cool. What kind of damage is that radiant? Four damage. All right, so this guy is hurting. He is barely holding on. Excellent. I'm going to... Get back into the, one of the corners and hide behind a brazier. I will make note that there is the still the cloaked figured woman behind you guys. Oh, is she coming from behind us? I was hoping to put myself like by her to like the right of me, so she'd be like you know kind of like to the like back right to me, and then I got everyone else to the front of me. Oh, well, hold up! I was not raised in a barn. I closed the door behind us. Okay, she came in with you, and there's like a little hallway leading into here, and she's right behind you guys. Oh shit! Okay. Wahaha. <laughs> is the guy that's been hit by my ice and Montgomery's attack still up? Just barely. Not a fan. Not a fan of that. All right, Montgomery, anything else? Uh, no, that's all I got. So next, one of the figures standing by the pillow to your right, close to you guys. You're going to watch as this energy starts to form from where his head would be. And he's going to make a beam attack on gloaming. I don't support right, this. I'm going to need a dexterity save. Uh, will 12 do it? Well, just does it. You barely dodge out of the way. You can see, like, he's readying, like, another eye beam as his turn is over. Next is going to be the woman in the cloak behind you. It's like, I strongly suggest you reconsider. And she is going to take a look at Kurdic. I am going to need you to make me a wisdom save. That's a 14. 14 makes it. You feel like almost like you're in a daze for a split second. And you're just, you're able to shake it off. She just looks at you menacingly. Like she's preparing to do that yet again. All right, and that'll lead us to 
<laughs> that leads us to Titus. Uh, how many people are there in this room? All right, so where you guys are positioned, there is the woman behind you guys. Just a little bit ahead of you, to your left and to your right, right by these large pillars. Next to both pillars, there is another individual. So one on your right, one on your left. Up the stairway toward where the pedestal is, there were two others to the right and the left of this landing where the stairs lead up to, as well as Blackthorn. And Blackthorn's uh, this bitch? Uh, he is the cause of this. He is the tiefling. He's the one that's doing the shit with the crystal ball, yeah? Yep. All right. Uh, I am going to uh, cast sleep on him. What are you casting on him? Sleep. At what level? First level, so it's 5d8 that I got to roll. It encompasses a 20-foot radius. I don't know if there's anybody else within 20 feet of him. Um, yeah, it would essentially be the woman as well as the two underlings. Is there any way that I could cast it that it would pretty much just get him or him and the woman or not really? You could do that. So I'm going to try and do that to just get him or just get him and the woman. Uh, I will use a spell slot for it. Alrighty. Not a bad roll. 31. You watch as this spell falls like a sand falling on Blackthorn and the woman behind him. You watch as the woman immediately collapses and falls to the floor. She's out cold. Blackthorn still stands. He looks at you as like, think of what you could be. Think of what the, un the, the, <clears throat> the unseen eye can show to you. What greatness you could accomplish. I got an unseen eye for you, and I just moon him. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Um, that, that does actually get a chuckle out of Glovig. Like, <laughs> I changed my mind. I like you. Perdix says, yeah, we like you. Anything else, Titus? Oh, that's it. I got it. So up next is going to be Blackthorn. So Blackthorn is going to look at Titus, and you watch as the center of his forehead, between his two eyes, like, breezes over. Watch as this large eye appears between his two eyes, and you see his mouth split open, revealing razor-sharp teeth. And you watch as a beam comes from his eye towards you, and I am going to need you to make a deck save. Jim the camera and say, that, that's kind of, that's kind of gross, right? You know, you're just living up to all the stereotypes people have about tieflings. <laughs> and they're one big eye. The 13. 13 just makes it. You initially feel like your body tense up. You have a little bit of a hard time breathing, but this quickly dissipates. He kind of snarls like, you will join us. His voice is deeper and like more menacing. Say, so, ugh, gross. And that'll be his turn. And next is going to be the guy to the left side of you on the other side of the pillar. And he is going to make an I-beam attack against Gloaming. I need you to give me a dexterity save. What the fuck? I have not, like, mooned anybody. <laughs> only, I barely said anything. <laughs> oh, hey, you know what? That's right. This is going towards Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> ah, finally, my negative one charisma has come in, <laughs> come in flux. <laughs> Not like the guy just felt too bad for you. He's like, yeah, you're right. Like, you know what? He's kind of pathetic. I'll pick out somebody else. Get a deck save from you. That's a 15. 15 makes it. You watch as this beam comes out, and you just like it goes straight for your feet, and you like do a little dance and just shuffle over. Do a little dance, make a little love. <laughs> Have a night. You grab your crouch and make a sh <laughs> and just shout. <laughs> And after that is going to be Gloaming. Uh, we're going to do Shadow Blade, and I'm going to Ray of Frost the guy who just attacked Montgomery. Ooh, nope, that is a nat one. That is a six. All right, that does not go off. So with casting Shadow Blade, you try, like, focusing on this other cantrip. And it's a cantrip. You can, you've done it a million times. But, like, as you're about to cast it, like, your Shadow Blade is fizzing out. It's like, oh, oh, no. Focus, focus. <laughs> and so you go back to focusing on the Shadow Blade. Titus says, hmm, performance issues. How far away am I from Blackthorn? He's probably about 40 feet away. All right, I'm going to use my 20 feet of movement to get closer to him. So I'm assuming I'm more towards, like, the center of the two guys at the bottom of the staging. Yeah, you're about center, maybe a little bit past them. Blackthorn, this is your last chance. Surrender. Surrender yourself. And he's now bearing down at you. I'm going to look over at my compatriots like, I warned him. <laughs> I'm going to try to act tough with, like I got something planned and coming. All right, is that your turn, Gloman? Yeah, that's going to be my turn. Up next is going to be the guy who's wounded, and he is going to... Who was the last guy to hit him? Probably me. 
So he is going to return the favor, and he's going to send an eye beam towards your way, and I need a deck save from you. That's a 21. You pass. All right, so you dodge out of the way. I start flipping him some arcane birds. That's going to be his <laughs> turn. He'll actually like move and step in front of the stairway, kind of blocking your way a little bit. It is like 10 feet wide, the stairs, so he's just blocking like a little corner. Up next is going to be Kurtik. Blackthorn is like up on a landing, right? Yeah, so he's up like 10 feet worth of stairs going up and then on a staging and feet up. I'm going to look up at Blackthorn and I'm going to say, uh, hey, Blackie. And I'm going to remove my laser rifle from my back and I'm going to take a shot at him. All right, take a shot. 20. All right, 20 would hit. Sweet. Make a damage roll. I get extra damage as well. I have Kensei's shot. You can use a bonus action in your turn to make a ranged attacks. With the Kensei weapon deal, an extra D4 of damage of the weapon's type until the end of the current turn. Now, what do you have to do? you have to spend a key point for that? No, I don't. I'm out of key points. Okay. That's just a general thing. I can use a bonus action to deal more range damage. I'll save your bonus action. The other cloak figure that hasn't taken damage that's nearby him is going to rush to his aid and take the shot. Yep. President down! Look out, sir! <laughs> Get down, Mr. President! <laughs> so the damage is pretty good. 19 damage. It looks like you blew a hole through his chest. There is nothing there. It's just like fabric. You see like at the very the top of this hole, like there's blood and what seems like a little bit of flesh in this, whatever it is, collapses to the ground. I'm just going to try and run towards something that I could get behind. You could probably go up to one of the guys by the pillars and maybe like hide behind a pillar so you're not in direct sight of Blackthorn. Um, and if you want, you do have your bonus action. You can make a unarmed strike. Gonna bitch slap you on my way by. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. All right, give me an unarmed strike. 16 plus 5, 21. That hits. Deal, roll damage. Wow, 7. Nice, good hit. Yeah, he is bloodied. You run up to this guy, like, looking to get cover from the large column. He's nearby. You run up, and you just, like, with your pistol in your right hand, you just, like, southpaw him, like, right where his jaw would be. You just hear this big crack, and the cloak figure doesn't like so much like spin and catch himself. He just like spins almost midair. When it looks at you and the cloak reveals a little bit, um, it's this like greeny, scaly mouth face figure with just a very large razor sharp mouth, one large eye, and you can see like not really hair, but more scales and like uh, eye stalks coming out from the top of its head as it bears down on you. Like, uh, and that'll be my turn. And for the record, I'm now down to 28 lasers. <laughs> only 28? Yeah, if I had 30, right? I only I only shot once. That'll bring us to the top of the round, Montgomery. Yeah, I'm going to Eldritch Blast that guy, one that was that was almost dead. But I'm just going to Eldritch Blast him anyway. He's like in the stairwell. All right, you can do that. That's a 20 to hit. That hits. I'm just going to spare you. He's dead. Fuck yeah. I just like basically let out like hump out towards him, like Hadouken him, and he's just dead. <laughs> it <just> disintegrates. <laughs> so, so, what is that? Uh, two down? That is two down. And you watch as like your Eldritch Bly shots shoots out up at him. Um, it hits him. It's not even like he falls off the stairway, but like almost like he glides off and then collapses on the side of the stairs. Neat. Super dramatic about it. It's like, oh, I've been shot. Uh... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to be near my blazer. I'm going to use it as cover still. <laughs> if this is Brazier's, maybe Blackthorn is the BBC. A British broadcasting channel? Yeah. <laughs> I knew he was a fucking red coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, he's British? I take back all the nice things I said about him. He's probably a terrible person. <laughs> all right, so Montgomery, you doing anything else? Uh, Yeah, no, that, that's all I can do. Up next is going to be, going to be one of the guys by the pillar. So this is the guy to the left side of the pillar. He is going to make a bite attack against you, Kurtik. Yep. All right, that's going to be a 23 to hit. Let's do it. It's going to be seven points of piercing damage. Ooh. Uh, this was a bite attack, you said? Yep. Sad. Okay. Um, nom, 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 nom. Um, I'm at, I just yell out in pain as he gnaws down on my neck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be his turn, and up next is going to be the uh, cloaked woman behind you. She looks up, and she has, like, golden hair. You can clearly see a third eye, like, on her forehead. Seeing that Kurtik and Gloaming have moved, uh, she's going to look at Titus. And Titus, I'm going to need a wisdom save from you. I realized after I saved from the last one, but I do have advantage against spells and other magical effects. I would say this counts. 
so 13. 13 would make it. You feel um, like almost like you're going into a stupor, um, but you're able to shake it off and return back to like a normal state of mind. And that'll be her turn. All right, next is going to be Titus. I'll walk up to Blackthorn and, and bonk him on the head. All right, uh, Blackthorn, for like where you guys are, would be like a dash to get to. Bonk. If you're going to walk up to somebody, you can walk up to either guys on either side of the pillar, or you can go up against the cloaked woman. I have 35 feet of movement, but that's okay. First and foremost, I'll cast Divine Favor as a bonus action. And what does that do? Basically, it gives me Vine Radiance until my spell ends, which is, you know, one minute concentration. Uh, my weapon attacks deal an extra 1d4 of Radiant Damage on a hit. All right, is that concentration? It's concentration. Yeah, I'll go over to Trick, who uh, just tried to attack me. I'm going to bonk that bitch. All right, go right ahead. Yeah, bonk that bitch. So I'll make an attack with my Morning Star. It's an 18 to hit. 18 hits. Roll for damage. Hello. You have Divine Smite. You have Divine Smite. I'm not going to use... Well, <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, wow. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to smite this bitch. I rolled a three for damage initially. Divine Favor is a fucking one. <laughs> um, I got I got no choice. I'm a smiter, but I'm going to smite her without spell slot. All right, so roll me a spell check. So you roll, you add your spell casting modifier, so your charisma modifier, as well as your proficiency bonus. So you have to get an 11 or above. I did not find. You uh, pray to whatever your god or beliefs you have to try and just smite this evil, um, but it doesn't bear fruition, but you still get the hit. So how much damage was that? Four. Four damage? You just get like a message from your god. Your call is very important for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, she looks at you and is like, perhaps you should put your faith into something more. I turn to the to the group and I say, I prayed, but he put me on hold. <laughs> <laughs> your prayers are important. To ah, us. Elevator music, <laughs> damn. <laughs> so after Titus, it's going to be Blackthorn. Blackthorn is bearing down on Gloaming. His attention hasn't been taken anywhere else, so he is going to make an eye beam attack at Gloaming. And you watch as his eye turns a dark red, and this red beam radiates from him. He's going to make an attack. That is going to be a 19 to hit. I am going to cast shield. All right, so that misses completely. The shield bears it, and you're good. Blackthorn, it's not too late to turn back. Once you go black, you never go back. <laughs> Shut up, Kurdick. <laughs> Sorry. Once you've seen what I've seen, you know that's not the case. I'm sure the town was very racist towards you, but this isn't the way. They were lovely, and this is their gift. This is what all life is meaning towards. Look, I just think you need a little bit of counseling. <laughs> so that's going to be Blackthorn's turn. That'll bring us to the guy to the left, and he is going to bear down on Montgomery. So Montgomery, he's going to get uh, an eye beam attack to you. I need a deck save. Uh, and I did not. I got a five. So this beam hits you, and you feel like just the life energy drain from you, and you're going to take three points of necrotic damage. Three? All right. I'm down to 21. All right, that's his turn, and up next is going to be... That's going to be Gloaming. So I moved 25 feet the last turn. Do I have enough speed to get up to... Blackthorn? Yeah, you can make it. Okay, yeah, I'm going up to him and I'm going to attack him with my Shadow Blade. All right, make an attack. Ooh, 10. Nope. Right, so you go in to stab him. It's like you, you were set, hitting center mass and just like his body contorts to go around your blade and then comes back to its normal shape. You'll have to do better than that, Gloaming. I plan to. Next turn. Next time for next turn for sure. <laughs> So is that it, Gloaming? Yeah, that's all I got. All right, that brings us to Kurtik. Yeah, Kurtik watches that happen. He peers around like pillar he's behind. Uh, you still have that that uh, cloaked figure in front of you. Oh, the one I smacked the shit out of? Yeah, you didn't smack it all out of him. You got to get the last bit out of him, man. Like, like a toothpaste tube. And he bit you. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> oh, he did bite me hard. Kur Kurtik looks over at the cloaked figure and proceeds to take a shot on Blackthorn. I wanted to take a shot on him as he's like sit, talking to gloaming like like you'll have to do better than that gloaming 
Right, go right ahead. Could just hot shot him. <laughs> yeah. See here. The attack. Seven. You go to take aim up between the column and the other cloaked figure. You're trying, like it's a tight shot, and like you're you're feeling like this pain in your neck, like where the bite went down into you, and you go for a shot and you just miss it. Kurdick looks down at his feet in disappointment and then smacks the shit out of the cloaked figure. <laughs> <laughs> you were in my way. <laughs> 12 plus 5, 17. Right, 17 hits. Roll for damage. Uh, 4. You, like, miss the shot, and you're, like, very angry at this little lie. You, you made me miss my shot, and you just, like, pistol whip him. I actually want to do it with the butt of my laser rifle. I just, like, flip it up and just, like, bluntly, like, press it into his face. Right, he is just barely standing. That's it for Kurnick. All right, that brings us to the top of the round. Montgomery. All right, I'm going to cast Hex on uh, the guy that laser beamed me. All righty. So that's a bonus action. And I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast. Blast away. So with Hex, I do get to choose an ability where he has disadvantage. I'm going to choose Dex, but uh, mathematically, I think Eldritch Blast is going to do better than Sacred Flame. So I'm, I'm going to fucking yeet that. Oh, yeah, that, that works. That, that's going to be a 24 to hit. That hits. Roll for damage. So that's going to be a 1d10 plus 3. So that's eight damage, and then a 1d6 from the Hex for necrotic damage. So that's 10 damage he just took. All right. So you blast this figure, and it's like almost like spinning backwards in midair. And then he finally like starts sloping to the ground, but then picks himself back up. He is very badly hurt. Next time, buddy. Next time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's going to be the uh, end of my turn. So that's going to bring us to the cloaked figure Corey's going up against. He's going to go for another bite attack. That is going to be a 16 to hit. Uh, yeah, barely. All right, and that is going to be six points of piercing damage. With a, a bite? Yep. Ugh. Big old teeth. That's going to be his turn. Then up next is going to be the woman. He's right up to Titus, and she is also going to go for a bite attack. Okay. That's going to be a 16 to hit. Negative. All right, so she goes to bite into your like neck and your shoulder, but she just catches like your your chainmail. <sighs> Gets like stuck in her teeth. Ah, say so, uh, not my kink, but I think it's yours. <laughs> All right, and that'll be her turn now. Titus, it's your turn to retaliate. What say you? Corey, how are you looking? I have four health, sir. Oh shit. Yeah. How, how close are you? You can reach Corey. Right. I'm gonna walk over to him. We'll take an attack of opportunity. That's fine. Yeah, that's only going to be 10 to hit. He's like, wait, come back here. Yeah, that's not going to hit. <laughs> Corey, what's your max health? Uh, 21. I'm going to, as an action, uh, lay on hands, and I'm going to use all 15 points that I got to heal him up. All right, so that'll bring you to 19. Yeah, buddy. And that's it, because as a bonus action, can't do fucking much of anything, huh? Yeah, it's rough for paladins. All right, so that brings us to Blackthorn. So Blackthorn is going to look down at Gloaming. He's going to raise his hand, and you watch as his hand becomes more of a tendril. He's going to go for a tendril attack on you. Oh, gross, 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 gross. And that is a natural one. <laughs> gross. I just, like, smack out of the way. No, gross. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> um, and then you watch as his regular eyes start popping out from his head and turning into stalks. That's even worse. And I'm going to say, Montgomery, I need you to make a deck saving throw. Oh, God. Why can't I make a Christmas saving throw? Okay, I got 21. <laughs> so you feel a heavy weight on you. Like your body becomes sore and like your breath heavy for a second. Take a deep breath and the sensation passes. And that'll be the end of his turn. And now it is going to be... All right, Montgomery, it's going to be the cloak figure that's been attacking you. He's going to rush you. And he is going to take, go for a bite attack. Oh, wait, you're free. That's going to be a 17 to hit. Yeah, that's going to hit. All right, and that is going to be seven points of piercing damage. Ow. And damage, I'm down to 14. And I need to make a save for my... Wait, wait, what? Is hex concentration? I believe it is. Let me double check. Double check it. I think it is. Yeah, it is. So I got to roll for that. 18, I'm good. All right, and that'll be his turn. Uh, and then up next, it's going to be gloaming. All right, uh, I am going to use the one inspiration that I got, and I'm going to attack him <laughs> with uh, with advantage. All right. 18 and a 22. All right, the tw both would hit. He's going to take 11 psychic damage. 
And I just try to like slice them like right through them, like right slice them right in half. But it's a shadow blade. It only yeah. You learned your you learned your lesson from the first time, and you're not just going like stabby for center of mass. You're going across, and it, you watch as like his form also almost distorts as it goes through, and he cries out in pain. Yeah, that that'll teach you to be terrible. All right. Anything else, Glowman? Nope. I'm uh, I'm just gonna keep slicing them up like this. That's going to bring us to Arctic. I'm gonna take another shot at Blackthorn. Come on, baby. Seventeen. All right, that hits. Roll for damage. Ten. Ten damage. Ten damage. Rolled an extra D8 than me. Did less than less damage. All right, eleven damage. Oh, okay, now we're even. As he's crying out in pain, you take the opportunity. You take another shot out, and you watch as like you hit like part of his face, and he comes back, stands up straight, and you watch as like his face is deformed, like where the shot went through, and it kind of just forms back a little bit. Kurtic grunts and smacks the shit out of the guy in the side of him. Yeah, he's about to go for a bite attack, like, on your arm. So go ahead and make an attack. So 14. That hits. Roll for damage. 7. A 4 plus 3. So you go and you just knock his jaw again. He does that spin, but it's like a spinning death twirl as he, like, slowly covers down to the ground and lays dead. Herdick, his bear bug instincts from when he was, like, a child, like, growing up. He's, like, full of glory and blood. Ah! Oh, he's going savage. We'll have to take him down next. Ah! <laughs> this is blood. All right, guys. And so the real big bad evil evil guy is here. <laughs> <laughs> with a laser gun. <laughs> with a laser gun. Bet you guys didn't see a bugbear with a laser gun. <laughs> that really does need to be, like, the big boss in, like, a level one campaign. <laughs> you know, it's just a bugbear. <laughs> just a bugbear with tech. Oh, thank God. It's only a bugbear. Oh, God, he's got a laser gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else, Kurtik? If he's dead, I'm going to run up the stairs, like, to get close. Uh, no, nope, never mind, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm just going to hide there. Take cover behind the pillar. Yeah. All right, so that'll bring us to the top of the round, Mount Gummery. I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on this guy that attacked me. He has disadvantage on dexterity. Oh, that's a net 20. Yeah, I don't want that one. And then that's a three. Yeah, so he's going to take 1d8 damage. All right, he is dead. So yeah, he's dead. He just basically melts, I guess. You watch as like he just rots from like the inside. Like his mouth is a gate. But it's this is not a very large creature. Like once the cloak is away, you can just. But he has a very large mouth of gate, and it's just like he burns from the inside out. And it kind of looks like Pac-Man, but with fire. <laughs> and with my bonus action, I'm moving my hex to the lady that was behind us. She has been successfully hexed. Yep, and uh, that's that's all I can do right now. So that'll bring us to the lady who has been hexed. I'm also going to have her be a dexterity, a disadvantage. Is it disadvantage with dexterity checks or uh, dexterity saves? The yeah, target has disadvantage on ability checks made with the chosen ability. Right, so ability checks. Well, technically, that wouldn't have killed him. God, God damn it. <laughs> I, th I thought it was saves. <laughs> Because otherwise, I just would have Eldritch blasted him. <laughs> and do you want to say Eldritch blast him? Because you know, like he had one hit point. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in that case, you don't get the cool Pac-Man death animation, but it's going to be her turn. Um, because you focus your attention to her for hex, she's going to look at you, and I need you to make a wisdom save. Oh, great! I I'm okay with that. Sixteen. You pass. All right, so it does not take effect. He has had no luck with that. That's going to bring us to Titus. That bitch who tried to bite me, that's the one that's right there, right? Yep. I'm going to doink her. All right, so you run up to her, and you're going to go for an attack. All right, let's, let's hit it with the Morning Star. Ooh, it's going to do 12 damage. Nice. All right, 12 damage. She is bloodied. I think that will be it. And that'll bring us to Blackthorn. Blackthorn is going to look down at Gloaming and he is going to just thrash at him. His tentacles are blazing. Gross, 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 gross. That first one does not hit. Oh, wait, how many, how many is he getting? He gets two tentacle attacks or an eye beam. The second one is going to be a 17 to hit. Uh, okay, I'm going to use shield. All right, it does not hit. And that will be his turn. I am out of my first level slots. Up next, we're going to have Gloaming. Oh man, Shadow Blade all the way. All the way. Shadow Blade. <laughs> 17. Gonna stab him right in the heart. 17 hits. Roll for damage. Ah, uh, it's only 8. All right, so again, you learned your lesson. He's kind of learning, and his body swerves a little bit, but you still, like, get a piece of him. And how is he looking? Um, He is bloodied. Just barely. Okay. 
It's all right. Corey's going to get like a really good shot on him and now think about. Yeah, Kurtick, your turn. I look at Gloaming as if I'm reading his mind. Get out of my head. <laughs> Kurtick hears that and kind of jolts back. <laughs> and he's going to shoot a laser rifle at Blackhead. All right. Take your shot. Okay. Did you call him Blockhead? Blackhead. Blackhead. You know Blockhead. Oh, that's worse. <laughs> the things that need to be removed. <laughs> I'll take things that need to be removed for 500, Alex. <laughs> that's a six. So you are just so in sync with what you and Gloaming are thinking that you accidentally aim for the wrong head. And you just barely nip Gloaming's cloak. Kodak. I look over at Montgomery like, huh? Don't look at me. Don't look at them. I clench my fist as if to smack the shit out of somebody. <laughs> There's no one there. <laughs> Is there anybody I can use my movement to get to? From where you are, you could dash or... I, yeah, you don't have any key points, so you can't dash as a bonus action. Yeah. But you could dash to where Blackthorn is. In my regular movement? No, you could get to um you could get to the woman in the back. I do that and I smack the shit out of her. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, make an attack roll. Seventeen plus five. That hits, roll for damage. Thick. You go for your shot. After missing that, you kinda like like turn your face away, like, ugh, like I can't believe I almost did that. As you're doing that, you see Titus go for this massive blow against the cloaked woman. And like, yeah, I'm gonna get in on that. And like as he's coming down, you run up and kinda like show yoking this woman into just oblivion. <laughs> yes. Like she falls back and she is on the ground dead. I revel in the shower of her blood that she may or may not have. Not much of a shower, but like, yeah, you do have like some you do have some blood on your fist. Yes. Uh, I don't know if he can still read my thoughts, but he's definitely thinking like, well, I'll have to kill him next. <laughs> it's Kurdick's turn, which brings us to the top. That's to Montgomery. I'm going to bonus action move Hex towards uh, Blackie, and I'm going to Eldritch Blast him. All right. I'm going to have him like have Dex as the disadvantage on ability checks, not saving throws. So I'm going to blast him. So that's going to be a 14. 14 just hits. Wheat. Full damage. Five damage of force damage, and then a 1d6 necrotic. Another four damage. That's nine damage in total. And uh, yeah, that, that's my turn. All right, that is going to bring us to Titus. Everyone's dead except for Blackthorn, yeah? Yep, it's just Blackthorn. All right, I can't get to him in 35 feet, can I? Uh, you cannot. You'd have to dash. I will walk 35 feet. Then I will use command and tell him to grovel. All right. That would essentially put him prone, right? Yeah. All right. What do I got to do for that? He has to pass a 12 wisdom. He does not. So he is prone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's it. That's, a, that's all I got. Perfect. <laughs> What do you think? All right, so it's going to be his turn. Uh, he stands up. <laughs> do you have to use your action to stand up when you're prone? Nope, just half movement. Oh, okay. Nah. Well, it was, it was almost great. I know. <laughs> it was at least humiliating. So he is going to make an eye beam attack. Uh, no, no, no. You can, get, you can get back to doing that. That was fine. So I think you have to fall prone on your turn, though, because it says a one word command to a creature you can see they must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or follow the command on its next turn so if it's your turn you would fall prone and then end your turn all right so that's what happens yes 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 oh yes this is much better <laughs> all right and that'll bring us to gloaming excellent that's gonna be my attack with advantage uh, you said that he was uh bloodied was bloodied yes bloodied and on his knees that is going to be an 18. 18 hits. Roll for damage. Ah, oh, man. I'm rolling terrible with damage. That's only seven damage. He is still groveling. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we, like, near the stairs at all? Yeah. Could I just, like, kind of, like, kick him down the stairs? As an action. Damn. I, I'm just going to dip into fighter for one level real quick. Action surge. <laughs> <laughs> just for a split second. Imagine I'm just a second level wizard in front of like this one round. I'm also a first level fighter. Well, yeah, that's all I got then. All right, that'll bring us to Kurdic. Can I still see black ass <laughs> when he's prone from down on the level? You that can I'm... just barely make him out. Um, you would make the attack at disadvantage. How far away is the stairs? How far away is the stairs? 
Uh, you would have to dash to get to him. Uh, would he still be making the attack at disadvantage if he would have advantage because homeboy's prone? Oh, no, that prone is only for melee. Oh, 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 my, my bad, my bad. If you're prone and being shot at, the, the, you're shot at a disadvantage. All right, well, I'm going to take the shot at disadvantage. Go right ahead. The first one is 15. Does that hit? 15 does hit. All right, let me roll my second one. Roll another 15. Uh, does 11 hit? 11 does not hit. Ugh. You're about to take the shot, and you just hear Blackthorn is like groveling. He's like, please, I, I've got a wife and two kids. He's like, oh, I want a wife and two kids. <laughs> and you end up missing the shot and like chipping the stairway. He's like, it was a complete and total lie, but I could have a wife and three kids. I am just going to uh, use my movement to get to the stairs. All right, you do that. You're at the bottom of the stairs. I think that's all I got. All right, and that will bring us to the top of the round, Montgomery. Well, I can't really see him, so I'm going to cast Sacred Flame. He needs to make a deck save while he's groveling. Yeah, he's prone, so I'm pretty sure deck saves are at disadvantage. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be a 17. Yeah, that passes. He's still alive to grovel for another round. I'm just going to walk slowly up towards the uh, the stairs. I'm not going to be at the stairs. I'm going to be at uh, the, the left side pillar behind it. So that'll bring us to Titus. Uh, with my remaining 35 feet, can I reach him? You can reach him. I'm going to reach him. All right, you get up to him, and he is begging for his life. Mercy, mercy, I didn't know what I was doing. It was it was the globe. It was it was the... <laughs> he's just going on in a tangent. You know, mercy is thank you in French, right? <laughs> May I have another? Yeah. Does a 12 hit? 12 does not hit. Man. Okay. You're slightly swayed by his very pathetic begging. <laughs> well, now I <laughs> feel wobbling. bad. So, yeah, you guys are looking at this crater that you've now created around this guy, smashing the concrete. <laughs> Stonework. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I have nothing for a uh, bonus action, so that's it. <laughs> We are slowly converging on this one guy, so... Alright, so that's going to be his turn. He's going to come to his senses like, Oh, no, no, I, I'm correct in all this, and there's there's nothing that's going to change my mind. Ah! No, 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 I'm correct. It must be the adventurers that are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Cultist Skinner! <laughs> and I'm going to need Gloaming. I'm going to need a hex check from you. And Kratos, I'm going to need a con save from you. As you watch as, like, two beams come out from either of his normal, now stalked eyes directed at you guys. So I got a nat 20. So I got a 22. I don't think I have to roll my advantage for that. Oh, you're good. So I got an 8. But what is the save? I could have gotten that up to a 12. Titus, you initially felt like your body tensing up and becoming still. But the sensation passes. So, Gloaming, you are slowed, so you're at half speed. Um, you can either choose to do an attack or a bonus action, but not both, and you have no uh, reactions. And that'll be his turn. And that'll be Gloaming. Okay. I'm still going to just stab him. This changes nothing for me. <laughs> I'm going to stab him. <laughs> I... Yeah, uh, 15. All right, 15 hits. Roll for damage. Make you my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, that was pretty good, actually. That was, that's going to be 12 damage. Oh! This does a massive wound. As it just, like, slowly cuts through him. <laughs> Very malleable flesh is, like, um is not retracting back to its normal form as quickly as it was. Like, he is very hurt. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right, that going to be your turn? Yes. <laughs> All right, and that'll bring us to Kurtik. Uh, Kurtik runs up the stairs. <laughs> you run up the stairs. Um, You kind of feel the theme from uh, Rocky playing in the background. Well, that's the final countdown. That wasn't from Rocky. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I was following up with him. So. <laughs> You're thinking Survivor. He's, uh, he's, I just, I'm just hearing my name chanted. Verdict, 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 verdict. And I'm like covered in blood from all the bitches that I just slapped the shit out of. <laughs> so I, I run up, I'm, it's like sweat and blood just like covering me. I look at Blackthorn. I point to him with one finger and say, your black ass is mine. <laughs> I point my laser rifle down 
and I shoot him point blank. Well, not point blank, but I shoot him in that in the face. Watch you fucking whiff this shit. All right, go ahead. Make a make a roll. It's uh 14. All right, 14 just hits. And I'm gonna use my bonus action this turn instead of just slapping the shit out of someone. It's gonna do extra damage with my ranged weapon. Come on, do it. Do it. Do it like 30 damage. Come on. Oh my god, dude. Okay, <laughs> I rolled two ones, so. <laughs> All right, so how much damage in total? And damage. While Kurtik is coming up this way, you watch Blackthorn. He's looking at you guys who have surrounded him just before Kurtik gets up there. And he kind of like tilts his head like, I didn't see this coming. Kurtik just like, <laughs> last like the shot right through the eye and he collapses. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as we're standing there with a bunch of the townspeople like dead in our midst, I'm like, all right, guys, we saved the town. Well, what's left of it? <laughs> all right, I'll pretend to be Gary. <laughs> all right so what do you guys do so so i'm gonna climb up the altar on stairs i'm gonna i'll just blast his head off just to be safe just to be safe fair um while he's doing that can i take my cloak off and you guys just kind of see like i'm in just like kind of like underwear <laughs> it's wizarding <laughs> undergarments it's official yes it's very important uh but i'm gonna use my uh cloak <laughs> and i'm just gonna cover up the orb and pick it up using the cloak so that i'm not actually touching it I was actually going to mold earth around it. So, like, if, if you want, I can help you out. But then how can I walk around in my underwear? <laughs> ah, we, we finally found out what was wrong with you. You're a pervert. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a man enjoying walking around in his underwear. In fact, having having contact with the air is good for the skin. All right, so you cover it up, and you're now carrying it. And there's a nice gentle breeze. <laughs> Just a rock dome. Um, you didn't know this, but it's a cloak of billowing. Yeah. <laughs> you got a, you got briefs you got a briefs billowing lovely anyway this whole time we've all seen your underwear <laughs> from your cloak billowing behind you but we just haven't said anything it's just a lot of constant upskirts basically yeah <laughs> it's like i'm in a sailor moon episode titus uh yes i think you've proven yourself quite well Grab the woman that you put to sleep. I think we're going to bring her with us. All right. I picked that bitch up. You know, I'm kind of glad I didn't pass Flaming Spear, because she'd be super dead by now. <laughs> super crispy. Very. All right. To the Lord Governor. Well, you guys do head back, and the doorway is there again. You guys get the attention to the Lord Governor. You guys have saved the town and uncovered the mystery of the missing people.